today's video is going to cover hollowing our sculpture. Uh, so one thing I want to mention is that I have not added all the thicknesses. So you can see I just have the one side from my demonstration day. I did not finish detailing the nose. I did not get all the thicknesses added on for the fur. So make sure before you do the hollowing process that you add all your thicknesses. Uh, for time's sake within the quarter though, I am still going to use this demonstration piece uh, to kind of show you how you're going to start to hollow. So you're going to need your clay cutter. So that is your piece of fishing line with two washers. Uh, some of you might also have this one which has the real wire and then it has the two handles. So that's our clay cutter. Uh, you're going to need your needle tool. If you are in the studio, you're going to have access to a fork. So you could use a fork as well. If you're at home, maybe, maybe not. And then you're going to need your loop tool. Now, actually, this is a wire tool. I apologize. Uh, some of them only have one end, so they kind of look like a loop tool, which means they only have one end. But this is technically the wire tool. So it does have two ends to it, and I do know that some of yours are broken. And then, of course, I want my slip. So the first thing that I need to do is to decide what is the best part to cut off so that I can hollow this out. So for me, I don't have a super long snout, so I'm thinking maybe the back of the head might be better. So some of you might cut the back of the head off kind of at an angle. Some of you are going to cut the front snout out because that's the uh, furthest part out and that's going to be hard to get in from the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and take my clay cutter and I'm going to slice down into the head and then I'm going to slice out. This is creating kind of like a cap that I cut off. And then that way I'm not disrupting where I attach the head and the neck. So obviously you can see that it's solid because we did start with a solid hunk of clay. And so our goal is to hollow the neck out and to hollow into the face. And our true thickness is about a quarter inch. So that's what you want. Now I'm just going to start kind of digging in. And I'm going to leave myself a quarter inch barrier on the outside. And then this is that hole that I put in the back of the head when I put the head and neck together. So now I'm going to come up because I need to make sure that I hollow into the face and then also down through the neck. So I'm just going to start scooping. And so I'm removing that clay. I like to press my hand on the outside or just kind of place it there to feel for pressure so I can kind of see if I'm getting too close. I don't want to deform my, my head as I hollow it, so I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, but it does kind of let me feel if I'm getting the tool too close. Now, it is not uncommon for you to maybe poke a hole into your sculpture, but Kind of like with our pinch spots at the very beginning of the quarter, if you put your hand, you could kind of feel the pressure as you were pressing down. So I've started scooping downward and I've started going inward just a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip my sculpture upside down and I'm going to go ahead and create an edge all the way around again. So about a quarter inch. Then I'm just going to continue to scoop. So it's important to remember that we have to hollow out the head itself. And then we also need to hollow out that neck. And that ideal thickness again is a quarter inch. If you leave it just a hair thicker, we should be okay. But if we're getting anywhere close to a half an inch, that's going to be way too thick. And I just have my hand on the outside so I can feel like if I'm getting too close to anything, feeling for pressure from the tool. And it'll take you a few minutes to get it hollow, depending upon how much thickness you had to add. So now you can see that it is literally hollow through the neck and into the head, but I haven't done the front part of my face. Now, if you are online only and you are at home, these scraps, 
You're probably going to keep for ears. If you don't have any extra clay, you can put a wet paper towel on it. If you're in the studio, these scraps can go into the recycled barrel. So now I'm going to start working into the face. And this can be a little scary, but if you poke a hole, you can just fill it from the inside. But what's really helping prevent me from doing that is that I have, I just kind of felt the outside my tool poked, so I know it's thin there. And then we want to get all the way into, oh, so here I did start bulging out a hole, so now I've made a thin spot. So to fix that, I'm going to take my soft clay that I took out, support the outside, and I'm going to blend in some clay on that inside. So it's a pretty easy fix. I also want to make sure that I get behind the eyes. Sometimes when you score and slip those eyes and those coil pieces in, you can trap air. So if we make sure that we get behind the eyes, that's going to make sure that we didn't get any tra air trapped behind there and prevent your head from exploding. So that's kind of a sad day. Go through all this work and effort, and then if we don't have it the right thickness, you risk explosion. So again, I poked another hole over on this side. So I'm just going to take my soft clay again. I'm going to put it on the inside, and I'm going to smear that in. So. The size of my head has reduced, or I guess the weight has reduced greatly. It feels a lot lighter, but it still can support its own weight. Now, I can't attach the back of the head until I hollow that back part out. So I want to make sure that I remember how it goes back together. And then I'm going to go ahead and scoop that. And I definitely just opened up a whole bunch of air pockets from when I was adding clay on top of the head, I'm leaving that quarter inch edge. Then when I feel and make sure, okay, so it's a little thick over here yet. Take just a little bit more away little bit more in the back. So now I have my head hollowed out and before I can put it back together, um, if you're in the studio a fork is going to be faster and basically we're going to poke a whole bunch of holes in the inside. So this is to help make sure that if we didn't catch a spot that might have had air in it that these holes will release it to the inside of our sculpture and it won't explode. So I put a whole bunch of them in with the fork. I also want to do inside the neck. And if I happen to poke out to the outward side, I can just rub that over with a little bit of water. I don't need to add clay for the little holes from the fork if I were to go through. Now if you don't have a fork that you can use, um, the needle tool will work just fine. It just will take a tiny bit longer because it doesn't have as many tines as the, the fork does. And I want to go all the way up. So there I went into my neck. You can see. And then I went up towards the opening. And then in the opening, I want to continue. Again, this is a preventative measure. This is going to make sure that we don't have any air trapped in where we added thicknesses. It's also going to uh, make the inside dry a little faster, which is a good thing for us. Now, when I get to the snout, I can't quite get the fork all the way into that area. So I might have to switch to my needle tool anyway. And I want to make sure that I get all the way in there. And I definitely poke some holes onto the outside of my sculpture under his chin. So I can just rub those out. If they're not rubbing nicely, I can use a little bit of water, or since the head is still disconnected, I could also um, add some clay from the inside. So now that my sculpture is hollow 
and I have added the little holes in the inside with the fork, or you can use that needle tool, I'm ready to attach the head back. So I need to score. This is very, very important that you really rough this up. As with everything we've attached, what helps keep it together and prevent cracking is how well you scored. And then remember, whenever you attach parts, what you're scoring or what you're attaching you should score, and then where you're attaching it, you need to score. So it's really important that you do that. So there I've roughed up the edge because the head's gonna come back through here. Then I'm also going to score this area as well. And that's nice and rough. So I need to just do this bottom edge and then it'll be ready to go back together. So it doesn't take an incredibly long time to hollow your sculpture out, but you do want to be careful with the thickness and how soft that it is. And so now I am ready to reattach it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my slip on. So I'm back. Sorry that this is in two segments, but instead of hitting pause, I accidentally hit stop. So thank you for your patience. So I went ahead and scored the back of the head and I scored the part that I need to reattach. And so I'm going to put that back into place. And if you want to make sure that you have the right part, I think I just put my head on wrong. So I am going to go ahead and rotate that. Yeah, there we go. So you might want to test that before you actually glue it and start putting it back like I did. Uh, so it's easy to get that that piece kind of lost. So now it's attached, but there's this seam line that we need to handle. And what I should have probably said to you is that you're also gonna want a wood tool, um, or you could use your wooden rib, that would work too. But basically we need to blend. So just like everything we've done um, this quarter, we need to make sure after you score and slip something that you blend it, so that way it stays together. And with some of your animals, you're gonna be able to see that seam line pretty crisp. So if that is you, what you can do is take some of your soft clay and smear it and blend over the seam. That's gonna help reduce that seam line. And then from there, you're gonna be ready to start going into the details for your sculpture. So details include fur, details include ears, uh, details include different areas to make sure that they are well crafted. So once you have that kind of blended out, now you are ready to finish making your creature uh, look like it should. So that is how to hollow.